wisdom of Solomon. The strength of Hercules. The stamina of Atlas. The power of Zeus. The courage of Achilles. And the speed of Mercury. Say my name and you shall be granted my power. Shazam! Hi everyone, I'm Bill. I'm Justin. And welcome to Car, car Reviews. Reviews. And today's a very special car review, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so Fandango. Thank you. Fandango, of, you are awesome. Fandango had an early access showing of Shazam today, two weeks before its official premiere. The embargo dropped today, so we're here. We saw Shazam. We're reviewing it. And we're going to tell you everything. Now, this is actually our first advanced show. Like, we've gone to, like, what, Thursday night showings before? Yeah, we've done the Thursday night previews before in the past. But, yeah, this is the first time we're seeing a movie well in advance. And, and thankfully, the embargo has been lifted, so we're allowed to talk about it. We're keeping it spoiler-free because you guys are probably not going to see it for another two weeks. So, we'll be nice. So, the plot... Young Billy Batson, who is a foster kid after losing his mother one day, is transported to a wizard who gives him the powers that I listed off, that we listed off earlier. The Wisdom of Solomon, the Strength, strength of, of Hercules, Hercules, the Stamina of Atlas, the Power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles and the uh, speed of Mercury and he becomes the superhero something Captain Sparkle Fingers he goes by a lot of names in this movie um, and there's a complicated history on that you know what I'm going there originally this guy was named Captain Marvel you can see why they're not using that name. So they... So in the comics, he's tried Captain Thunder. And eventually, he just started just going by Shazam. Even though he can't ever say it. Yeah. Without turning back into Billy Batson. And, um... Oh, yeah. And when Billy Batson becomes Shazam, he becomes an adult. Yeah. And then, um... He's fa and then he faces a, um... And then he, there's a villain in this movie. Dr. Sivana. Who is played by the guy... Mark Strong. Who, uh, you may know him best as Merle from... Merlin from Kingsman. Kingsman. Or perhaps uh, Lord Blackwood from Sherlock Holmes, the Robert Downey Jr. one. Or perhaps you know him as... Sinestro from the god-awful Green Lantern movie. Yeah. And um, also... Adult Shazam is played by... Zachary Levi. Yeah. Who's Kid Shazam played by? I don't know. God. But I do know Buddy, that... Buddy, we're really sorry. We forget yeah. your name. We apologize. You did great. You know, we'll All, all the kid actors in this movie did a good job with the role they were given. Um, and my... And Justin will tell you this. I have a gripe with child actors. Yes. They can be very bothersome, especially the worst child acting out there and there can be some really bad child acting out there the thing is because a lot of child actors they don't act like you know children they act like what adults want children to act like yeah if that makes sense but you know what like these kid actors actually didn't annoy me well yeah. there were times there was one little girl she it was more like a she's three she, she wasn't three she was around there. Three or five. But, you know, we'll give that a pass. Uh, well, guys, before the hate mail, I, I do not hate children, so don't. You can send all hate mail to... Mm -hmm. Watch it, pal. Watch it. Nah, nah, nah. I, I don't I love kids. I love kids. I just... Some actor, some child actor, just great on me, and I'm not gonna be angry at this kid. She's like three, maybe four, between three and six, we'll say. Okay, okay. we're going to estimates now. But anyway, I thought the acting was really good. Um, 
the kid who played Freddie Freeman, I actually recognize as the kid who played Eddie from It. Which I've only seen a little bit. I gotta watch the whole film. Um. But yeah, it's Shazam has to go up against Doctor Savannah, who is embodying the seven deadly sins. Um. Like the demonic manifestation. Yeah. And I want to make something kind of clear. This movie was directed by a horror movie director. And you can tell. Well, we can tell when horror movie directors do direct lighter films. Like Eli Roth when he did, what was it, House with a Clock on the Walls. Yep, or uh, James Wan doing Aquaman. Yeah. James Gunn doing Guardians. Because remember... Uh, James Gunn's like big breakout movie was a movie called Slither which was a horror movie so he's got a hat in that ring too Scott Derrickson of Doctor Strange fame there's a lot of horror movie directors doing comic book movies Hmm, because they know where the money is that or maybe they're these horror movie directors and, you know, and I've seen some of the credits that these people have. Some of them are great. Others, not so much. So, it's interesting when you have horror movie directors doing movies outside of their genre because it's such a unique perspective. You get, like, what can be scary you can actually get really scary with these guys, you know? I know, right? Like, there was some shit myself moments in this. Yeah, and you know what? And um, if we can transition into this, if you don't mind. There's, like, what is good about this movie is, like, there's a balance of everything. Yeah. Got some great action. Great action, great comedy, great charm. It's got some dark moments. Yeah. And it's got some heart-wrenching moments. Mm -hmm. And that movie makes it, and this, and that really makes that movie really, you know, really something. And, you know, it's just, it's just a fun and charming movie. And because, like I, because it's like the kid is turned into a superhero it'd be like anything if a kid was turned into a superhero I mean, be it's, excited. It's, they'd be excited it's the it's the ultimate dream of a kid what would you do if you had superpowers well this is the movie that pretty much answers you know, it a lot of movies they can do it stupidly as in they could just make it dumb and and granted there are some moments in this where you just watch it and like, it's stupid but I gotta laugh they could just make it dumb and generic, but you know what? Here, they don't do it. Am I, mean, I right? I mean, I'll say this. There are some moments that can be interpreted as dumb, but they're really funnily done. So, you know, I'm a fan of dumb comedy if it's done well. And this does, like, the slapstick and the, and the witty jokes, banter. It doesn't so well it's it actually does remind me of an MCU movie in the quality of this movie everything it's just such a nice balance and glad you mentioned MCU because you know what I think this is like the Marvel movie that DC really wants to make because we we touched upon this in our Aquaman review we're going to touch upon this a little briefly here okay DC, I think, is finally letting its hair down. When I was looking up something before the review, it said, G- said DC is finally letting the movies be, you know... Fun. Fun. Because the identities, Marvel has always been like the, you know, the fun movies. The, mm-hmm. Well, DC has always been like dark and right. gritty. And the thing is, because now that we live in the post-Dark Knight world, all the DC movies were trying to be... Batman. We're trying to be the Dark Knight. And... Now, I'll say this, though. 
Marvel, the reason why Marvel succeeds is not because everyone wants bright and colorful movies. They want that if the character warrants it. Like Batman. I would not use this tone. Oh, they tried it. Twice. It, yeah. Um, but like, I would not give this movie the same tone as The Dark Knight. Oh God, it would be terrible. I would not make this movie as violent as, say, Deadpool. Even though the tone is similar. You know? It's... You have to think of the character first. And in development, if the character warrants a certain tone or a certain amount of violence, a certain amount of swearing, etc., etc., do it! And, yeah, but this is... But I think, again, because DC, they're finally getting the memo. Yes. And you know what? I hope that this is the uh, result of the sort of change in leadership at DC Films. Yeah. Um, because Walter Hanama took ch- charge last year of DC Films, you know? Yeah. But there's something else I'm kind of worried about, though. That they're going to go too far in the opposite direction again? Yeah, like, what if DC tries to become basically another Marvel? Well, it's like I said. The movie should... The movie... The character should be what warrants the tone. Yeah. Batman, make it dark, make it gritty. Superman... Make it joyful, make it hopeful. Maybe not as laugh out loud and funny as this movie, though. Yeah. Shazam, so, you can go full on with the comedy. And you can have a bunch of other tones as we saw in this movie. Um, I'm trying to think of a more unique example with. Uh, but I think it's finally nice, again, that DC's breaking out of that Zack Snyder, Christopher Nolan. Yes. And don't get me wrong, I love The Dark Knight. It's one of my favorite one of my favorite movies. And I'll even say this. I thought Man of Steel, whether it worked or not, was an interesting experiment. You know, like I'm glad I saw it to see what a movie like this could have been. You know? Yeah. It's just didn't entirely work. And but it was an interesting thing to see. Just to say, okay, so that's what it would look like if Superman ended up like this. Um, but this, this was pretty much exact, almost exactly what I wanted to see out of this. Um, I mean, there were some moments where I was like, okay, I can s- kind of see um, the writing here and there, I, but it didn't bother me too much, like, you know, you were supposed to be there for me, I'm only looking out for number one, me, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it does have those kind of tropes. It has, it has tropes, but they also do some really unique things, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but what they did in the third act was fantastic. Genius. One little gripe, I will admit. I think the last fight went on a little too long. But it's nothing that I'm going to be losing sleep over tonight. Well, look at it this way. Did we get a sky portal? Yes. Uh, No. No, we did not. Yeah. Did they trash the entire city? Nope. I see that as as a step in the right direction, DC. So, yeah. I think... I think if DC keeps going on these routes, instead of, again, going back to, like, the Christopher Nolan, Zack Snyder, mm-hmm. which, like what you said, if if, if you could go to do, like, another Batman movie, then yes, go the Snyder direction, go the Nolan direction. Or the Matt Reeves direction, which is supposed to do something a little different from what we've seen previously. But here, just do what is fit. And you know what? 
I think this is probably one of DC's best. Really? Yeah, I, I'll admit, I would maybe put this up with Wonder Woman and Aquaman. All right. Yeah. I mean, this was a really fun movie. I had a blast and, with this. And you know this. what? To um, parents out there, I think this is a good movie to take your kids to. What do you think? Um, yeah, there's a couple moments here and there little. where they're like, eh, for the kiddies. Um, but nothing graphic. Yeah, like, it's not graph. It's not, like, overly violent or like, anything. Like, it's rated PG-13. And there's a reason for the PG-13 rating. Yeah, we're, but, we're being very careful in this review because 99.9% .9 of you probably haven't even seen it yet. Yeah. It doesn't come out for another two weeks. We just got lucky. Yeah. Um, so my question to you, though, what do you think about the villain? I thought he was good. I didn't think he was great, but what did you think of him? I mean, he wasn't a... He wasn't Thanos. No, he was no Thanos. I wouldn't even say he was an Ego or a Vulture or, or a Hela. Um, let's see. On a scale of... Thanos to Mr. Freeze. From Batman and Robin? Yeah. I would put him up there with the first Green Goblin. Really? So you think he was cheesy? A little bit. I think he was a typical, you know, what's he going to do? Take over the world. Of course! Yeah, like, he's cool. I think he was cool. Yeah, and, like, the effects on the sins were pretty cool, too. Um, but, you know, once you think about it, you're right. He is kind of cheesy. Yeah, I mean, like, it's cool what they do with the sins. Um, especially how uh, they sort of resolve the whole would thing. You say he's not, would you say he's the typical, typical top hat and twirling of the mustache? The villaining? Yes. Oh, I'm off villaining. No, um, I wouldn't say that because he is a more proactive villain because he... He does shit. He does shit. He doesn't just sit around Twirl. twirling his mustache villaining while people do his bidding. In fact, you can almost argue that he himself is the pawn. Huh. Because there's a scene again we're not going to get into it because... Um... Final verdict? On the scale? I say see it. Yes, yeah, this, this is a strong see it. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say this is an IMAX movie. But it's it's a fun movie. It's a really fun movie. I had a blast. Me too. I thought it was fun. Um, there are two after credit scenes. One is... Teasing something. Yeah. I don't know what. And the other's just... Funny. Yeah. So... So, yeah, it is pretty marvel for a movie. For a DC movie. DC, take notes! DC, you done good. You now, done don't good. fuck this up. Okay, so what's next on our list? Um... Maybe Dumbo? Maybe. Oh, God. What's, what's next on the DC list? No, I meant like our movie. I know, but, yeah. um... Oh, wow. What? Next up for DC is Joker. And that's in October, right? October. Ooh. Can't wait for that. That should be interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next time, maybe we should start taking on the mouse. Woohoo! Oh boy. Okay, okay, we've already technically taken on the mouse with Captain Marvel. Technically. Yeah, but this is a more direct take on we're, the mouse. We're coming for you, Mickey. Okay, e easy. Who knows? The movie could be good. Yeah. Because it's the, the start of the remakes of the year. 
three of them. Yeah, because but after between that and Endgame, it's really yeah, maybe we'll throw something in there. Yeah, that movie is. Best of Enemies that looks decent. Best of Enemies. It's about a civil rights a civil rights yes. activist and a Ku Klux yes. Klan. You told me about that. I mean, I saw the preview for that. Yes. And they end up becoming friends. Yeah, maybe. Okay, but you know what? If you guys know us, we're not. There's really nothing. There's nothing we'll really say no to, unless it's unless it's Gotti. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned. Next time, we might have to go take on the mouse. <laughs> of one of their first three remakes of the year. Will it be good? Maybe. Or will it blow? Well, it's Tim Burton, so... That's a, that's a plus. But remember Alice in Wonderland. Could go either way. Okay, bye guys. See ya.